Hey everybody, welcome back to another podcast from From Our Minds. I am the sort of main host, Andrew, and hey, wait a second, you're not Steve. No, I'm Kevin. I'm the guest star for today, right? Yeah, something like that. That or Steve just doesn't happen to be here and I have to record something. And today we're talking about Warcraft 3 and those nifty little uh, mercenaries you can hire that chop down the trees with the double-edged chainsaws and just like hack right through the whole jungle in like two seconds. Remember those ones? Not like those wimpy wisps that like circled around it and just kind of harvested it without, you know, destroying the tree. Ah, so we're going to dedicate a 30 minute long (laughs) podcast to a 20 year old game. And how to harvest the wood in the game specifically. (laughs) Ah. Don't, you don't remember that guy? Yeah, it's the the, Goblin Shredder. Goblin, Goblin Shredder. Oh, that guy was boss. I used to love him. His environmental devastation. Wasn't it? Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's rare in medieval yeah. times. There you go. We have 28 more minutes to talk about the Goblin Shredder unit now in Warcraft 3. Do you think we could, do you think we could <laughs> stretch it out into 28 minutes? He had a really cool animation, and he wasn't the standard unit, so it was really hard to get. Like, Remember, you had to get him from a specific place, and I think he expired after a while, didn't he? No, he didn't. He didn't expire? No. Oh, maybe I just lost him. Oh, I ran out of trees. Was he a good combat unit? <laughs> I thought you wanted to talk about Star Trek. <laughs> right, speaking of Goblin Shredders, Star Trek. <laughs> What's the name of the movie again, the new one? Uh, we just saw it. <laughs> the one that only kind of sucked, but didn't suck that bad. Every... Like, that first trailer when it came out, all oh, you saw was terrible. a big uproar on the internet about, you know, people saying, oh no, this is the end, right? Well, I, from my personal experience when I watched the trailer, I, I saw it all the way through and I was said, hey, that was a really good Flash Gordon trailer. When, when they're <laughs> releasing, like, the Star Trek trailer, though. Yeah, full of action, 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 and then, uh... But it wasn't nearly as bad as it first seemed. That it, it seemed it was no. going to be a train wreck when it first oh, came out. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the, the first trailer. I actually think I kind of preferred a bit more to Into Darkness. Oh yeah, you're you're one of the yeah. You like it more than Into Darkness, eh? Yeah, like uh, I don't know. I I whenever I see Into Darkness, I just think of Wrath of Khan, and then I can't help. But, you, you you have to compare the two movies. You're using the same villain. And so you like this one because it stands on its own. Yeah, and you know what? Okay, uh, the villain in the new one, he's kind of like a... Uh, he kind of made sense to me in a way, you know? Even though you didn't really know much about him until, like, what, the, like, the last ten minutes? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. He's a bit of like a... I don't know if I would call him an enigma. But when but... you see it the second time, there's little clues. Yeah, I, I am curious about that. I, I only saw it the one time so far. I, I saw it the second time with my dad. Mm-hmm. When, uh, and yeah, there was little, they little, they do little droppings here and there. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite is uh, that I, well, one, the only one I remember right now. Oh, this is a spoiler cast, by the way. Oh, yeah. That's called Spoiler Alert on everything from here on. In. Yeah, yeah. From like all the modern Star Trek movies. And when we get you the Goblin Harvester shredding numbers for, you know, wood production, uh, that'll be a spoiler too, because you should figure that out on your own. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, spoiler alert, yeah. I, for those who've seen the movie, yeah, at the end when uh, they're leading the attack on the Yorktown That was station, really neat. Um, when he's in his little, you know, B-pot or whatever, and uh, that old NX ship goes by. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, he says, oh, hello. He said something. Yeah, my hello, old friend. old friend or something. Yeah, yeah, my old friend or hello, old friend. <laughs> I thought that was kind of weird. What do you think of the NX class starship? Well, they kind of got it wrong in, uh, in the movie. Although I'm sorry... <sighs> See, I'm not too sure. It was supposed to be an NX ship, right, from the Enterprise it series? It to be, yeah. That's but it was, it was Warp 4, and the Enterprise, they couldn't go Warp 4, could they? No, the Enterprise from the uh, the Enterprise series, they made a big deal about how it's it was the first Warp 5 ship. Okay. So it's, I don't know who missed that in the research. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a pretty, like, the whole series was, like, there wasn't a whole lot to the first season of that series, except they kept mentioning every episode how they could go Warp 5. <laughs> and I'm like, that's the one thing they kind of miss. <laughs> like, you put all that attention to detail into making the perfect CGI copy of that ship, and then you mm-hmm. miss something like it, the speed it goes. Yeah. I, I don't know. That was, 
I don't know. Is that is that a nerd thing to nitpick? It probably is, but maybe. Well, it seems actually, like they should have cut a. No, should... that is true. It is true because he came and said, "Oh, this is another this dimension is... thing." Because this would have happened beforehand. Beforehand. Before the universe is split. The universe is split after that. Yeah, afterwards. Sorry. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. You know what I mean. Right, right. So it should have still been the same. Yeah. Like... What Archer did still happened in the split universe. Uh, Captain yeah. Archer. Oh, my head just got a little bit... Okay, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so... Yeah, so it should have been... I don't know. It's a small thing. Even in the non-split universe, War 5, War 5, you know? Yeah. So, anyways, it was just a tiny mistake, but, you know... Attention to detail is kind of what made Khan, I thought, really good, because they uh, they paid attention to a lot of the little details, you know, and mm -hmm. from the original movie and, uh, and everything, so... I, um... Uh, I was kind of missing that in a couple places here. There was another thing they missed too, wasn't it? What are you referring to, like the new one that just yeah, came the, out? Yeah, the or? movie that just came out. There's a couple little. You know, I'd I'd have to watch it a second time. In all honesty, well, I answered, only saw it the once. The first time you're watching a movie, you're, just, you're like, "Wow, sparkly colors and flashes sparkly and colors. things!" Yay! Yeah. You're not thinking like, "Hey, he just said seven three zero two one six when clearly it should have been seven three two zero one dot seven. You know, kind of an idea like that. And then are we are we jumping right into nitpicking right away? Well, no, no. Then let's okay. go back to broad strokes, maybe. All right, broad <laughs> strokes. So overall, the, <laughs> what? Okay, the reason why I didn't have high hopes for it was in the trailer. It made it look like the Enterprise gets blown up thirty seconds into the movie. Then they spend the next two hours just kind of like running around in their underwear on the planet surface. Yeah, yeah, they kind of seemed like a cheap episode or something. Yeah, it was like it was it was like literally I, a long it, it episode. It kind of did have that feel though, even even after. A little bit, yeah. I, I was I was happy to see that the Enterprise they really tried to keep her alive. <laughs> oh yeah, it didn't go down too quickly. No, no. It's like, oh man, they tried everything they possibly could, you know, to keep it going. Yeah, uh, except you know, running away when the unknown threat came. <laughs> yeah, but not all of us are cowards, Kevin. <laughs> I would have been so out of there. <laughs> oh, mysterious ship thing, run away. <laughs> And that's why he never made Captain. <laughs> you know, remember that episode in Next Generation the, through the looking glass when Picard was like some no-name science think, Yes, 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 yes. That, that would have been you. That no, would have been your entire no, no. life would have been I would have, that. Okay, okay. I would have taken one pot shot at the thing and when I saw it was this weird swarmy deal, I would have been out of there. <laughs> <laughs> By then, I think it probably would have been too late already. Well, they didn't try until after they were already getting hit to move out of there. Like, Okay, but assuming that you were on the, the pods and all the rest of it there, you know you want to get on that ship that's there right there, right? And they, the NX aren't exactly the graceful class of starship. And so it slowly starts to pivot around so it can get away. And don't forget there's the nebula. So you'd have to slow down when you got to no, the no, nebula no. anyway. No, the, the NX class starship, that's the ship from uh, the Enterprise series. Yeah. Not the uh, the ship in the movie. Yeah, but... The, Oh, that's right. Yeah. What, what class is that? I, I don't know what it's called. That's not actually. a galaxy class, is no, it? No, no, no. That's no. from Next Generation. Ah. But yeah, okay, so it slowly had to But yeah, it still is, yeah, yeah, kind of an idea. I don't know. I, I, those few seconds, I think, could have, you know, made it. All <laughs> right, and this is why they don't make movies about Kevin. And so <laughs> Kevin ran away, and they sent another ship instead. I would be I would be a vice admiral at the Yorktown, sitting in behind an impenetrable defense. <laughs> hey, the... The air smells funny suddenly in here, and there's little black flies <laughs> everywhere. Oh, no! <laughs> We're all dead. Yeah. Oh, you know what I liked about the movie? Uh, at the end, when they techno-babbled their way out of danger. I <laughs> yeah. thought it was a great... I don't know if they were doing it intentionally, but I thought it was a great tribute to Next Generation, because they did that almost every episode. Yeah, yeah. Not, not as bad as Voyager, but yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> Voyager. Voyager resource. Oh, I didn't even watch Voyager. Uh, but it was kind of like... Oh, Technobabble, we have a problem. Uh, Technobabble, we could do this, but it might not work. Oh, Technobabble, let's try this. Okay, wait. And then everyone contributed their own piece of Technobabble, right? They got yeah, the whole yeah. crew involved. Uhura had something to say. You know, the, the white alien babe had something to say. And then they were just like, Technobabble, okay, do it. And it would be, you know, who in the day? <laughs> I thought that was great. I don't know, some people... Did you read anything about people thinking that was weak? Or? No, not about that, no. Yeah, it was well, okay, because it's, it's a science fiction show anyway <laughs> the only complaints I, I i did mind you i don't look too far into what other people's opinions are on movies and stuff i'm like yeah. i want to search the forums to see what people say no i, I was just curious if that uh, was yeah. Uh, yeah general feedback i get just from like oh random stuff popping up on twitter and whatnot is yeah 
they complain about the main villain. Like, there's no reason for him to have done what he did and why oh, the point. Is, but that's what makes him so compelling. Like, it was an interesting new villain, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know, like, being lost for eons and, you know, like... Yeah, like, he's not needed anymore. They stuck him in, like, a captain's chair. He didn't want the job. Yeah, he was lost before he ever got to that planet, really. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, that's kind of the whole point, you know? Like, a soldier without a war to fight. Because the Makos and Enterprise, they didn't get along with the Federation guys too much, did they? Yeah, it was, it was touch and go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was touch and go till the they held together until the season was over, and then you never saw or heard from them again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, assuming they left after the Zindi thing was over. Yeah, yeah. They mentioned yeah. the Zindi. Yeah, they did mention the Zindi. That that was nice. Yeah, there was no. They were they were okay with attention to detail. It was nice that they tried to tie it all together. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so it did take place in the same universe as Archer, right? Eh? Yeah, it had to have been. Yeah, yeah. The Zindi yeah. war happened. The Zindi war happened. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, those wacky Zindis. Interesting. Yeah, I know. That was a good season. I want to watch that Enterprise again. Yeah, so they're doing a, a new Star Trek series now, too, taking so place. So my dad says. Yeah, 10 years it. before Kirk left on his five year mission or something oh, yeah? like that. Yeah. Really? Apparently. I thought that was like a really weird spot to decide yeah, why to would do you a have series. One there? I, I, I heard that they were going to do had one. one at the formation. What? Uh, they were going to do one like way into the future. Mm -hmm. Kind of thing like that, where the Federation, it's it's kind of got like stagnant, where you know science has slowed down to a crawl. Oh, There's no real Roman enemies. Empire? Yeah, kind of an idea. All they do is they go to planet, they terraform, colonize next planet, terraform, colonize next planet. You know, and spread and, the uh, human virus. <laughs> basically, yeah, and like you know the Ferengi are like super rich by now. The Klingons have calmed down a lot. They're not like crazy warriors anymore. But then some unknown threat appears out of the darkness. Oh, the Borg and. Uh, I don't know, some flirt or whatever like that. And it turns out that some lieutenant commander or something on one of the spaceships is like an ancestor of Kirk or something like that. And and like they're just getting slaughtered by like this unknown enemy. And it's up to like Kirk's ascendant, like jump up and like, no, like, you know, rally everybody and fight back. Well, that's kind of fun. But I mean, how much setup would you do? Would you do a whole season of Decaying Empire setup? Because, like, really, that's kind of a one-trick pony. You got, like, one word to fight, and, you know, there's, like, one... Oh, I'm sure they could expand it somehow, like one twist. you know. So what's the new one going to be about? Uh, it, they haven't really released that much information aside from, yeah, it takes 10 plays before Kirk leaves on this five-year thing. There's going to be, like, be a female lead. Any of them? I, I, by then, they must all be in Starfleet and stuff, so I'd imagine... Huh. I like to think that they would make, like, at least cameos oh, in the Oh, maybe Kirk will be an ensign or something. No, he never was, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, jumped interesting. Up. Oh. But, uh... <laughs> I don't know. I liked the. Uh... That would be interesting. I have no idea what they would do with that, but I guess it's an open sandbox. And... Yeah. So, oh, by the way, they're not going to recast Chekhov. Oh, for the new one? Yeah, yeah. Because he died? Yeah, poor guy. He just, so he's gone they, forever, he's I guess. He just disappeared? Yeah, I guess they'll just write him out or kill him off or something. Check off uh, transferred to another base. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know what? Check off is gone for a while. When he comes back, he might look different. His voice will be changed. <laughs> <laughs> His voice will be changed. Oh, poor uh, check off. Oh, that what a crazy way to go, though. I still can't get over about how the what poor happened? guy he died. He left his car in neutral or something. Yeah, yeah, and like he went to go check his mail or something weird, and like the car like rammed into him, pinned him against it, and he couldn't move or get out, couldn't oh. get help, and he just died from elements, I guess. From being I don't crushed. Know. Yeah, like oh, what a. Oh. So wait, he probably didn't hear his car rolling towards him, right? Because it yeah. was like just kind of off, and then. That's so weird. What a freak accident. Yeah. That's like a Final Destination kind of thing, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. No, those kind of deaths are creepy. Yeah, Final Destination death. Ugh. Do you think they'll ever put William Shatner in any of the remakes? No. They're supposed to make another remake, though, eh? What, like a third time? No, not, not a or remake, like a fourth but movie, they're yeah, just though. making a fourth movie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd imagine That's so. It, yeah. Like, uh, the first one made tons of money. I'm sure the second one made a good amount of money. This one didn't totally kill in the franchise. Yeah, so, the, hey, good for you, you didn't it. Kill did it. make a lot of money its first weekend, didn't it? Because it was the only one out. They opened it up on a good weekend with no real competition. Yeah. I, I saw it in theater. Honestly, as a side note, I, this, I'm going off on a bit of it. Welcome to From Our Minds, Kevin. Steve and I often go off on side story tangents so about a lot of stuff. So what's your tangent today? 
Okay, this has to do with well, people who tour at movies. Today's tangent with people, Andrew. <laughs> people yeah. who tour at movies. Do you have an intro song for that? Uh, no, I don't. Eventually, I'm someday, gonna make one. maybe. Today's tangent with Andrew is... Did it, did it, did it. Go. All right. People who torrent everything. Oh, torrent. Now, I'll admit, I do torrent some stuff, all right? Oh, However, shame, generally shame, speaking, Generally speaking, shame. I always go to the theater. Because the way how I think about it, if I like a movie or a series, I want them to keep making more movies of this. And so I give them Take my, my money, money. <laughs> and so that they have the money to make more of it. Makes sense. Makes sense, right? And you know what? Generally speaking... I'll only torrent movies from like I'm super on the fence. Like I don't really think I want to see that. And usually after I watch the movie, I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I didn't spend money. There have been a couple of rare occasions where I've seen a movie I torrented. And it was, I felt bad. It's like, oh, I wish I paid money to see that movie because it deserved it. Because it deserved you, it. You and I felt scoundrel. really bad. But it's kind scoundrel. of oh, it is kind of handy. Your though. conscience keeps you awake at <laughs> night. <laughs> but generally, I try to watch movies in theater when I can and want to. I know people who never go to theaters and they just torrent everything. And I've noticed something. What? People who always just do nothing but torrent, no matter what the movie is, yeah. it's a bad movie. Uh... That's a dumb movie. I'm glad I didn't waste money on that movie. It's like, buddy, that movie made like $900 million. Rave reviews got like 98% of Rotten Tomato. Everybody loves it. I don't like it. It was stupid. It's like, they, the people who do that, they have no appreciation for anything, I guess. It's like a cheat code in a game. Yeah, it's like you don't yeah. get anything from it. You it's know? like these it's people like... using fake geolocators to play Pokemon. Yeah, well, so it's like, what's the point? Yeah, what's the point? What's yeah. the point? I'll just Android box it or whatever like that. It's like, well, okay. Uh, some movies, I understand that. For instance, a movie that I did torrent and I felt bad after torrenting it was The Big Short. I wish I saw that in theater. You torrented The Big Short? I wish I saw that in theater. That was Andrew. a good movie. All right. I felt bad, but... Somebody could make the argument, like a torrenter. Isn't it on Netflix? It probably is by now. Uh, somebody could make the argument that, well, you know, it's just guys sitting around in a room yelling at each other. That's not the All point. Right? But, yeah, so, like, but the thing is, when you look at something like Star Trek for a second here, like that, right? There's yeah. facts and blah, 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 and all the rest of it. Oh, you're saying if you were going to see any movie in a theater, yeah, you should at least, at least Star Trek. Yeah, yeah at least yeah. Star Trek. But yeah. no, it's like... Maybe that has to be a part of it. You're in a theater. You got, you know, your special juice that you snuck in in your backpack. You know, you got your popcorn and stuff like that. You're surrounded by people. You know, sometimes they get right crowds who cheer when something happens on the screen. That's, That's always fun. It's, it's a lot fun. of fun. Yeah. And then you never just go to the theater. You get something to eat before or afterwards. You walk there, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's all part of the event. experience. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Or you could be like the torrent who's sitting there. By themselves, stay in the at dark. home, not even bother yeah. to change your underwear. Then just like watching like in like a fourteen inch you know computer screen, you know with like their uh, dollar store headphones on. Oh, that movie was dumb. It's like, yeah. well, of course it was lame. Like you completely ruined it. No, I'm with you on that one. I uh, I'm a big movie booster. I like seeing it in theaters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you can assume I'm talking about video games too when I say all this torrenting stuff. Yeah, too, yeah. It's the same thing with games. Same thing. Same thing. No appreciation. No appreciation. That was a dumb game. I'm sure glad I didn't spend money on it. It's like, oh, you I, know what it is? I, <laughs> it's just like uh, Starship Troopers, when the uh, the school teacher is talking about citizenship. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's like, something given has no value. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you just get it for free, like what value? Yeah, it's true. And like in regards to video games, for a second, I've seen people because uh, they log played hours and stuff. It's like, buddy, you played this game for like ninety hours. It's like, yeah, it wasn't very good. You played it for ninety hours though, and the game was only <laughs> fifteen bucks on Steam. <laughs> You're saying ninety hours of entertainment wasn't worth fifteen dollars for you? And like you know, meanwhile the guys are like eating like a. A McDonald's combo that costs like twelve bucks, yeah, you know, kind of thing. Oh yeah, I I, I get really upset when I see that. Well, I for one am glad that I did see it in the movie theater. Oh, I don't know if I want to tell this story because I feel kind of, I'm still kind of pissed off about it. What about the Big Short? No, about uh, Star Trek. Oh, Star Trek, yeah. The first time I went to go see it, I was all hepped up. I wanted to see it in style so i got a d-box seat Ooh. but it was my first time getting a d-box seat okay I, I was late to the theater and i didn't know anything about it and when i got there i sat down and uh thought it was kind of lame because the seat was just kind of not so big and it just yeah, kind of yeah. buzzed a little bit and then all of a sudden i realized 
like 20 minutes towards the end of the movie that I was in the wrong seat. <laughs> and apparently my seat was off because I was like, hey, why is the guy next to me moving around? The guy next to me, I think he got a free ride because he was in my seat. <laughs> and I, I'm still kind of peeved about it. But, I mean, I can't go back again and spend another 25 bucks to go see it, can I? Oh, I don't know about that. Maybe <sighs> the next movie you want to see. All right, what about Rogue One? Rogue One, I'm sure. I'll see that in D-Box. It'll be hard to get a seat to that one, though. Yeah, I'll just give it a week. It's kind of handy because uh, I'm sure most cities have this. We have a theater called Royal Theater close by. It's one of those theaters that, you know, like they start to play movies like a month, month and a half after they're out, but it's like cheap tickets. It's nice. Yeah. It's nice, but they don't have D-Box. Either. No, they don't know. It's <laughs> just a simple man's. Yeah, but a ticket's like 10 bucks flat to get in. Yeah. Which is kind of nice. Which is cheap in the city we're in. But you know, back up in Sudbury where I saw it, the movies there are less than 10 bucks. It's like $7 to see a movie. <laughs> Can you believe it? It's like half the price as it is here. So cheap. Apparently no one was going anymore, so they just slashed the prices. Yeah, yeah. Every night's cheap night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy here. Oh, yeah. you, you, there are some cheap theaters. Uh, there's a... Uh, Wyatt showed me this wonderful theater called the Magic Lantern yeah. Theater. And it's Young and... Young and Dundas or something weird like yeah. that? Carlton Cinemas. I never would have thought if you didn't show me where it was. Uh, we went to see the Warcraft movie. And so you walk in and you can immediately tell they don't judge anybody when you go in there. <laughs> which is kind of nice. <laughs> All right, Went into the theater. Okay, so... People, you're going to have to see this with your mind's eye here for a second. So basically, they had about, uh, I'd say, 15 rows of seats. There's only one row, though. And each row is about six seats deep. <laughs> and there's only one aisle, the aisle that you entered in on the one side. And so you walk Where in. Where was this? The Magic Lantern Theater. You walk in. in Toronto? Yeah, here in Toronto. You wow. walk in. Uh, you have your 15 rows of six seats to choose from. You walk up or down the one aisle that's available to you, and you sit down. The screen is probably around 12 feet wide, maybe. It's strange. It wasn't very big. But you know what? If you sit close enough, who cares? And the audio was fine. The, uh, the sound was fine. The picture quality was fine. It was just it was a very small screen, and that could have fit maybe like 50 people tops inside of it. Fascinating. What was, was the point? I, it was cheap. cheap. It, was it was cheap. cheap. Okay. It was nice and cheap. Uh, and so, and Warcraft, the movie, I, I, as you could probably tell when Kevin did his intro here, you know, I like Warcraft. Kevin kind of knows the basic about Warcraft, so I wanted to see the Warcraft movie. But yeah. uh, the person I was with, my dear brother, who knows very little about Warcraft, is like, uh, he only went for the sake of, because, you know, he likes going to see a movie every now and again. And so he didn't want to pay, like, 15, 20 bucks to see it. So we went to Magic Lantern. <laughs> and he enjoyed it for the price? Yeah, it was fine. Oh, that's okay. Happy endings for everyone. Happy endings for everybody. Just like Star Trek, they had a happy ending for everyone, except Chekhov. Yeah, except for Chekhov. Yeah. And the bad oh, guy. Oh, that was another thing that was funny. In the original series, every once in a while, Chekhov would talk about how something was actually from Russia, not from where everyone thought it was from. Yeah. Like a, a grain or an instrument or something. And uh, in the movie, they kind of did the same thing. He was talking off in the background, and you could hear him say, Did you know that scotch was actually invented by an old Russian lady? And I thought it was really funny. <laughs> because it was just like the original series. Yeah, that, that happened this, right at the end in the celebration, yeah, right? Yeah, th yeah, This is really... this. That's one great thing about this set of movies, is that they uh, there's a lot of little tidbits they put in there for the fans, you know? like. Well, wasn't this supposed to be considered an anniversary movie? Oh, I, I don't know about that. Yeah, it was. I think so. And that's why they had, you know, like the, the photo of the old cast. And, oh, yeah, that was nice. You too, know, stuff yeah. like that. I that was the warm more fuzzies. obvious. Yeah. yeah. That was obvious, but it was nice. And yeah, kind of yeah. makes Spock realize he should stay where he is once again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was with a. I saw the movie with a buddy of ours. I won't say what his name is, but his name starts with J and ends with N. And he was flabbergasted. He just simply could not understand. Well, why why were they why were they so old in that picture Spock had? It's like that's from the original series. I know, but they're young now. So why are they so old in that picture? No, I mean like the original series from like the sixties. <laughs> yeah, but they're doing that now. So why are they? So... I just kind of gave up and walked away. But did he see the original movie where he comes back in time? I'm I'm, I'm assuming so. Maybe he didn't. If, if he didn't, then I feel kind of bad now because <laughs> I didn't think of that possibility. Oh, poor guy. So, poor, poor guy. I'm uh I'm you know who I'm talking about. I'm guessing. Yeah. Hey, okay. <laughs> like ah. Oh. It's, uh, Some people are really nice. Yeah, no, he, he is a nice guy. It's just uh, he 
have to explain movies to him, I guess. Well, you know, if he's not really a fan and he didn't see the first one, it probably it's a fair question. It is a fair question, yeah, yeah I guess to be true, if yeah. It, if 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 and if. Really. But that was a, that was a nice spot, you know. Yeah, it kinda, was a nice spot. Yeah. It was a very because uh, this is, I guess, the second time that Spock has died. If you think about it, you know, he died. Oh in yeah. At the con, then he died again in this one, and he had such a nice farewell to both the character it's, and the person. You know what? It's the thing about it is, is that I'm glad they. Uh, left it kind of like they did it very subtly it didn't take a huge part of the movie because yeah, yeah. it's it's kind of been over and dealt with for a while now right yeah, like yeah, everyone's yeah. kind of like said goodbye to him already so so I, i'm glad i didn't kind of drag the movie down so, so what did you think then because i i'm curious about this i remember one other big point of controversy is i'm saying uh mr sulu was openly gay oh yeah and it was this huge big deal and fiasco about it's, it and all the rest of it it's like you said it's like the last movie where they said that girl was yeah what, the underwear the underwear scene it's like there that, was no big deal at all the, like, the way how the internet built it up you think the girl in the underwear is like doing a dance and or stuff a soft like that core scene or something you know kind of thing <laughs> like that it's over like a few seconds and then not even a few seconds it was like half a second <laughs> do you mind and I'm it like, totally oh, fits to the movie like it's yeah they're gonna of, have at like each that's other supposed later to be anyway. his future wife right yeah. so you know and then then soon uh, it was over in like a few seconds yeah that was, it's there like, was nothing to he it. walked over he said hello and they put an arm around they, each other they and they even, walked away they didn't even kiss or anything yeah. it's not even like the original series on tv had an interracial kiss this was yeah, like yeah. a movie and it had nothing you know deep space now i had like lesbian kissing and stuff in it i, I i'm saying <laughs> It was nothing. It was nothing. It was nothing, yeah. Like, what's the... Ah, whatever. It probably was only that same 30 people that try to make controversies yeah, on the internet. Yeah. It, I, I know some people are very sensitive to stuff like that, so just do a nice, long, like, 10-second blink, and you'll <laughs> get through it. No problem. <laughs> yeah, if you want to pretend things don't exist in the world, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, like, just go ahead, and you can stay in your bubble. <laughs> like, oh, man, it's like... Uh, I don't, know, um, I don't understand it. I'm interested. But in that added some. That was good too, because his family was on the Yorktown, so yeah, that yeah. gave it a little bit more. It's not just some big space station that's gonna get destroyed. Yeah, because they saw his a, family too. Yeah, they saw a Buddy with their daughter there running when it was under attack. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I must have missed that. Oh, I it, didn't see that. It was just for a few seconds. It shows him like holding the daughter, like looking oh. up. It's like you know the ships are flying by and he's scared, running away. Oh no, kidding! Eh? So it's like, oh, you know, that's Buddy. That's Buddy. You know, Sulu Senioretta. And... Sulu. Oh, he's the woman? Uh, I don't know. Did, I don't what, know. Did, did you think Sulu would be the pitcher or the catcher? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is in Starfleet. I don't know. In the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah. yeah, that's too much. No, I I liked I liked the I liked that how it added to it. I also liked the uh, big. Usually, there's a big long intro where they do flybys of the ship, right? Yeah, yeah. This one had a nice flyby, but the Yorktown scene was like what a minute or two. Yeah, but that looked, that looked really neat. But actually. it was so cool. Yeah. And well, it wasn't just like it was cool for coolness' sake. Like, oh look at look at this cool thing we thought up. That was good. But the other thing that was really good was all the people on it. Because it was kind of back again. This movie kind of went back to the old positive side of Star Trek, you know, like yeah, everything's going to be everyone, okay. Folks. Everything's going to be okay. All different races holding hands together, yeah, yeah. living in peace and harmony, you know, like kumbaya. That you know? almost kind of made it the villain more interesting in the way. Yeah, and it added to the yeah, villain. He's too, an old right? relic that we don't need you anymore. We'll be just, your friend, but you have to do what we tell you to do now. Just couldn't, uh, just it's... couldn't handle peace. Just couldn't handle that happens peace. today. They've made a few... They've played that theme a few times. There was the episode in Next Generation with O'Brien's old captain who couldn't handle peace with the Cardassians, remember? I think I remember that one. Maxwell, he went on a rampage, like, killing Cardassians in one. Mm -hmm. And then there was uh, Star Trek VI where there was a whole bunch of people who couldn't handle peace. They were yeah, all... Yeah. Like, like, that's... And that happens in the real world. Like, soldiers come home from war and they just don't know how to handle peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's something I'll never understand, but... You know, it it exists. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not far fetched. That villain was totally believable. Yeah. Yeah. And he had, he doesn't know what to do, so he lashes out. And he lashes out in some, some way. way yeah. yeah. Domestic terrorism. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I have to watch the the movie a second time. I really need to. Yeah. Uh, I'll wait till it goes to the cheapy theater. Then I'll probably see it. Again. Yeah, I'd probably go another seven bucks on it. Yeah. Like, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> I just finally got to see the Jungle Book, the live action one. Oh, yeah, was I, that any good? It was good, but I couldn't help but cheer for Shere Khan. I was like, come on, like, cheering for the tiger, hoping he'd kill Mowgli. 
Oh, it's like I actually don't know what the story is. Oh, but well, you never saw the you never saw the Disney one. All I remember is there's a, a bird pot. Of Seth that he yeah, I over. remember that, and I remember like an earthenware jar rolls down some steps, and he follows a girl. Oh, that's a, like at the way at the end. Yeah. All right. Well, I won't ruin it for you, but for those who did see it, I was cheering for the tiger. Okay. All right. Uh. Oh man. Anyway, so that's going to be it for today. Uh. I guess things went well with your old Kevin here like that. In case you're wondering why Steve wasn't here, Steve is a really huge movie buff. Well, he likes movies, some movies, but he, Star Trek isn't really his thing. No, nah, Star Trek, no. And he's asleep right now. And too. he's asleep right now. That's, that's another good reason. <laughs> I was awake. That but, qualified me to yeah, be on the yeah. podcast. <laughs> we'll, we'll be back uh, to discuss other movies, because I believe that Kevin has some rather interesting points to bring up about a certain movie called Guardians of the Galaxy when a ship is attacking uh, the planet. But we'll leave that for next time, all right? So thank you very much, everybody, uh, for listening. Once again, I am Andrew, the sort of main host. Uh, and that was Kevin going, Your entire whole planet is just left with nothing but the police time, to guard bye it. Bye. I can't.